go to school and then reschedule the thing. Silly, shoes are not for chewing. These are for chewing. Chew your, there's another one. Um, so thank you for um, your patience and understanding while I went to Ava's little basketball game. She's not like on a team or anything. It was just, um, it was just for her classroom. Like her classroom played another classroom. So it was a fun little thing. Um, Sierra, we have, oh, there they are, 19 viewers. Okay. I was thinking maybe we were in the wrong place because things get confusing when we um, have to change some stuff around. So I'm just going to double check on YouTube that we are live and all is well. I don't know if it'll let me. Yeah, it says live. Perfect. Okay, good to go. Awesome, awesome. All righty, we have one question so far, so I'm getting ready to answer that one. Go ahead and be asking your crochet business questions here in the comments, and Sierra will star them, and then I will see them, and then we will answer them for you guys today. Cheryl, I did change this live, not the Crochet Boss Academy live. That one is still at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time inside of the Crochet Boss Academy Facebook group. This one was changed because Ava had a basketball game that I wanted to go to, um, and they did so good. Her team won, and everybody played really well. Both teams did really well, so it was a good time. I was glad that I got to go to that. So our one and only question so far this morning is from Lilla, and she says, I'm thinking of making some cup cozies to sell for summer, iced coffee ones. Most patterns recommend cotton yarn for cozies, but I don't have much cotton. What's the biggest reason for cotton? And Michelle already gave um, her opinion, which is the same as mine, which is cotton is more absor absorbent than um like acrylic. Acrylic yarn, the water just kind of beads up on it and cotton is very absorbent. So if you did not have cotton, what I would do is go through the different fibers of yarn that you have, the different types of fiber, and maybe make a swatch and then see how it does with water on it and do a little trial and error, do a little experiment and see which one works best for you. I use cotton in all of my coffee cozies. Um, there's one, a, a really popular coffee cozy, iced coffee cozy pattern that uses Bernat Home Decor yarn. Um, you could look into that. I did try using cozy something from Hobby Lobby. It's like, it's got nylon in it and it's stretchy and I don't think it did well. But I would just do some trial and error and test different yarns that you have and see which ones do best. Maybe another natural fiber like bamboo would do good. I am not sure. Um, I don't know what you have access to, but hopefully... Um, hopefully that helps a little bit. Thank you for your question, Lola, and thank you for being here. Umber says, what tags should I be using on Etsy? You should be using searchable phrases, and these should be in your tags, your title, and your description of your Etsy listings. Searchable phrases are things that people would actually type into the search box when looking for the thing that you sell. Spoiler alert, people do not search, they do not go to Etsy.com and search the word gift. Gift is not a searchable phrase. Gift is one word that nobody would go search and press enter. You would search gifts for moms, gifts for kids, gifts for coffee lovers, whatever makes sense for your ideal customer and the product that you sell. You can list the same product multiple times in your shop with multiple sets of keywords to help you get a greater reach. But your titles and your tags should have the exact same keywords in them as much as possible. Tags can only be 20 characters. So if you can find 20 character searchable phrases or less to put that in your title and tags, that would be really, really good for your um, search engine optimization to help you show up in Etsy searches. Very good question. Thank you, um, Umber. I hope that was helpful. Kendi says, hey, Ashley, would love podcast recommendations. I'm inside CBA. Hi, Kendi. I just approved. Well, I denied it, but I made... Another post, you asked about business card designs inside of Crochet Boss Academy, and I created an entire thread because I thought that was a good idea, and I thought other people would also like to see business card designs inside of Crochet Boss Academy, and I tagged you, so hopefully you saw that. Um, podcast recommendations for finished piece sellers. There is a podcast called The Product Boss. They are, um, it's two women that sell physical things. They don't sell handmade things, but they sell physical things. Um, the Business Boutique podcast, I believe, has been canceled, but I don't know if it's been deleted. So you might be able to find some of those. Simple Pin Media will help you understand Pinterest 
and Pinterest marketing and selling finished pieces on Pinterest. So you could definitely check out that one. A lot of people like the goal digger. I do not listen to that one. Um, Jasmine Star has a podcast called the Jasmine Star Show. Highly recommend anything from Jasmine Jasmine Star. And then also, when you listen to a podcast of somebody that you appreciate and respect as a mentor, and you you respect their um, opinions and their beliefs and the other people that they look up to, they will have guests on their podcasts. You can also go follow those guests because they probably have their own podcast too. I don't like to. Um, I I go on a recommendation basis. So I'm not going to just randomly find people on the internet that I'm going to give my trust to. I will, I have my handful of mentors that I respect and value their opinion and, and value their, um, their knowledge on who to support in their business. And then I, I will go from there when I find other people to, um, listen to or learn from. So pay attention to the, to the guest that your podcast people are having on them because usually they're all in the same niche and they're all doing similar stuff. So I would, I would recommend doing that for sure. Um, but Jasmine star is probably my favorite. And then, um, from there, but the product boss and simple pin media are both uh, really good too. Thanks for the question, Kendi. I hope that was helpful. Vonda says CBA student here, crochet boss Academy student here. Do you recommend only flat lays in product pictures or can other angles work too? So Vonda, this is inside module four, the seven types of products every listing needs. You, you need one of those seven and then you've got eight, nine, 10 more spaces for pictures. Use them wisely and you can take different angles to show the different areas of the, your products. Like maybe with the bobble stitch, if you're looking at it head on, you're not going to be able to see the texture as much as if you were looking at it a little bit at an angle because those bobbles are going to be popping up. So um, use all 10 of your photos. Use Make sure you have one of each of the seven types of photos every Etsy listing needs, which is in module four, and then use your other three but use them strategically. Don't use them because you want to use them. Make sure every picture serves a purpose because if not, you're just going to aggravate your um, customers or potential customers. Good question. Thank you. Lilla says, okay, thanks. So would acrylic work for hot coffee cozy since it's not absorbing the sweat? So Lilla, I've had a lot of people make my clear cozy in acrylic yarn. Um, I think that's probably fine for hot coffee cups. Only thing is acrylic is technically plastic and plastic can melt. So I don't know, like, legally if it's safe. But through my works of, with my hands and in real life, I've never had an issue. So take it or leave it. Samantha says, I always have 100 things to do. How do you manage schedule, work time, adding listings, doing others' life, etc.? cetera? Did that make a list of what's important to do those things first? Absolutely, Samantha. I have two resources for you. The first one is my planner. And you can go to a craftyconcept.com forward slash planners, and it will take you to my Amazon storefront where you can buy one of these. This is the crafty planner and there's multiple designs. Each one's a little bit different with the pages, but I want to show you what mine is like filled up. I want to show, I'm trying to find a blank one that I can show you what they look like probably at the beginning. I also use my planner as a scrapbook of sorts. Like today, I put pictures of our um, basketball team things happening. Actually, I'm not going to show you because it's got like the name of my daughter's school on it. So, um, but I use it like this is the day that we got Thaddeus and I put a picture of Thaddeus on there. And like these days, this is when we went on vacation and I got all kinds of pictures on there. Um, but this is what the pages look like. You get one full side of notes and then the daily to do's are on this side. You have your top three most important things that you need to get done that day goes at the top. And you know, if you get those three things done, your day counts as successful. And then you can put your appointments over here, like doctor's appointment, family reunion, uh, dinner with Stephanie, like whatever you, things you've got going on. This is a water tracker, a gratefulness section. So you can stay mindful about the things that in your life that you are grateful for that will help set your mindset to the right place and give you a, um, a healthier heart if you focus on things that you are grateful for. And then you have the daily to-do list right here where you can write the things that you need to make sure you do and then check them off. I have Etsy, email, and Instagram already on all of these weekly pages, not the weekends, but just the weekdays. 
because these are things that I do every single day. And I thought other people would also be doing them every single day. So I put them on there. And then today I'm feeling that's a bit of a mood tracker. If you struggle with um, mental health or anxiety or depression or high stress disorders, this can be very helpful to help you kind of track um your moods as they're going throughout the month. So maybe you can see patterns or um, if, if things happen that day and you can see what your mood was, you can draw connections through that. Um, but this is going to be very helpful. These come blank. So you fill in the dates yourself. You would need four of these for a year. Each one is for one quarter. So three months worth of daily to do's and notes pages. You can use the notes. page. So like if you said, okay, I'm going grocery shopping on Wednesday, you could flip to Wednesday and write your grocery list on the notes page and have it already there ready to go. If you want, if you know that you want to send an email to your list on Fridays, uh, Wednesday or Thursday, you can say draft tomorrow, draft Friday's email, and you can kind of plan your week at, ahead of time um, with the big picture in mind. So this is something that I would definitely recommend getting. You don't have to get mine. You can get somebody else's, but I would recommend getting a planner system that works best for your brain. Um, these are $12.99 on Amazon, and they do ship via Prime if you are an Amazon Prime member. The second thing is a new video that just went live last week to help you use your iPhone to set focuses so it does not distract you when you're trying to work. I use my work focus when I'm working and I use my work focus when I am at church because all notifications are turned off. I can only see um, texts and phone calls from the people that I give permission to see during those hours. Um, definitely check out that video. I'll have Sierra link it for you in the comments. If you are an Android user, you can do the same thing, but it's called something else. It is called modes and routines. Um, it's called modes and can be found under st settings and then under modes and routines. So that is how you can do it for Android people. I, I had an Android student or customer or friend follower message me and let me know that after my iPhone video went live. And I found that very, very helpful. So you can do the same thing on Android. It's just called modes. And if you need to look up a tutorial, you can go to YouTube and search how to set modes on an Android, something like that. Watch my video to get some ideas for how to watch another people's video and apply it to your phone um, because that will change your life. Do that today. That will absolutely change your life today. Um. Those are my two biggest things, Samantha. Another thing is you're going to want to start saying no as much as possible. Do not sign up for things that do not bring you joy. Do not do things just out of um, like obedience to your elders or out of obligation because you feel like that's that's just the right thing to do. You don't want to do it, but you feel like it's the right thing to do. I mean, listen to your spirit. Obviously, there's some things where it is you just need to do the right thing, right? But some sometimes pay attention to why you want to say yes. And if that reason isn't good enough, then just say no. Okay. It's okay to say no. You're trying to build a business. It's okay to not go to dinner on Friday, uh, on a Friday night to, to see your 13 year old nephew's birthday party. Like it's okay sometimes. And I'm not telling you don't go to your nephew's birthday party. I'm just telling you do what's best for you and your business and your current season of life and set boundaries when necessary. And, um, It'd be hard at the beginning, but it'd get easier the more you go. Another thing that will help you very, very, very much is a mindset shift. And there's another video on my YouTube. I will have Sierra link that for you as well called um, How to Build Confidence. And that video, if you listen to some of the stuff that I'm talking about for building confidence, it will also help you work smarter, not harder. Some of the stuff, they hold hands together. Confidence and time management they hold hands. So definitely check out that video as well. Hopefully it will be super helpful for you, Samantha. Thank you for your question. Umber says, how do you find creative reel or TikTok ideas? So for me, I am a creative person by nature. So the way that I do it is I will see another reel and then think of how I can apply that to my business. Other things that I do, those are for like trendy ones. Um, other things that I do are just out of routine now. Um, if I'm, if I like today, I'm going to post a video of a time lapse of Ava painting an Easter egg, a wooden Easter egg thing that we got from a friend that sells them on Etsy. Theo has a huge clump in his ear. Um, 
and it's just going to be, it's a time-lapse video and I'm just going to set it to a cool song. Really simple. Um, you can do transition things. You can do pointing videos. You can do um, voiceover videos. You can do a uh, transition where you drop a, a ball of yarn and when it hits the floor, it turns into your product, things like that. Um, but I would, I what I would start doing, Umber, is on Instagram, you can save your reels. If you push the little bookmark logo, you can save them. And then a little prompt that'll say save to collection. You click on that, you create a collection and call it real inspiration, R-E-E-L. And then you can go to that folder anytime you need inspiration to make your own reel and just start replicating basic um, concepts that you're seeing in other people's videos outside of our niche, inside of our niche, it doesn't matter. Um, but if you see somebody that says, um, if you see somebody that makes handmade like woven baskets and they make a video of using one of their woven baskets as an Easter basket and they're filling it up with gifts and you sell crocheted baskets, you could do the same thing that they did with their woven baskets, but instead use a crocheted basket and use their video as inspiration for your video. Um, that's definitely what I would start doing, Umber. Thank you for your question. I hope that was helpful. All right, let's see what we have going on in the comments. Kendi says, your planner is so far, by far my favorite. I've been using it consistently throughout Crochet Boss Academy and she loves it. Thank you. Thank you. Work focus, game changer, hands down. It will change your life. The work focus has been so helpful. It has kept me from mindlessly scrolling Instagram. I'm so happy to hear that. First, I'm happy that you guys took action and created work focuses for your phones. That's a huge first step. You didn't just listen to the information. You listened to the information and then you took action and set the focuses up on your phone. So very good job. And second, they're working really well for you. So you're getting more stuff done because you're able to turn off areas in your brain that are not important in this moment and focus on the things that you need to focus on in that moment. So very good job, girls. I'm glad that you're doing that. I'm glad that is working well for you. Samantha said, I make the same stuff over and over again. I'm getting bored with my posts. How do I find more topics to post about? Samantha, are you inside of Crochet Boss Academy perchance? Because we are going to talk about that in detail in module five, which is the next module to come out. If you are not inside of Crochet Boss Academy, my advice would be to create some sort of categories or pillars a handful of things that you can talk about on a regular basis that are important to your ideal customer and your and that makes sense for your business. So for a crafty concept, I have different pillars where I talk about me behind the scenes, um, benefits of my products or patterns, new patterns I'm working on. Uh, I try to spotlight other designers and other creatives in our community. So those are my community posts. I try to do encouragement posts. I try to do entertaining posts that are just funny. And I try to do um, business tip posts, uh, yarn, yarn tip posts. These are some of the pillars or categories that I use in a crafty concept on a regular basis so that I'm not just saying, hey, go buy my thing every single post. Nobody wants to see that. You need to try to mix it up. How can you serve your audience with the products that you sell. Maybe a post is how to wear it. Maybe a post is how to clean it. Maybe a post is how to store it, how to wrap it for Easter, how to how to um, use it in room decor. Like teach them how to do something. Show them different things with your products. Show them, you can also post like customer photos where people send you pictures of their kids with the things that you have with permission, ask if you're able to share them, and then you can share them on your feeds and say, I'm so glad so-and-so loves her blanket. Look how happy she is. That brings me so much joy. And it's exactly why I do what I do here in my, in my business. Those types of posts will help you mix it up. So you're not saying go buy my thing over and over again, because if that's your strategy, you will not get sales. People will get very bored very fast. Tell stories, share about yourself, share about your family if you're comfortable doing that, share about your workspace, share about what you're currently learning or doing, things that you can talk about that apply to your business or you as the business owner, people will find it very interesting. Ask people their opinions, ask them questions, ask for their advice. People love giving their advice and they love giving their opinions. Those will help you get more engagement on your posts. Next question is from my girl Way Nell, and she says, how can I write a disclaimer for my on my Etsy listings that state that every item is made is not going to be the same every time? I get one review in my shop saying the item did not match the listing. Way Nell, I would say um, in, in, in my listing, I would say each product is hand crocheted by me or a member of my team, if you have a team. And 
And each one is going to be unique because crochet cannot be replicated, cannot be exactly replicated. It is done by hand every single time, human hands, and it will vary every single time at least a little bit. This is not machine work. This is handmade work. I would say something like that. I am not a writer, so I am not the person to create you a cohesive, professional sounding disclaimer. Speaking of that, you also want it to be true to your tone. So get the point across appropriately, but also stay to, true to the tone of your business and brand. Don't try to sound buttoned up and professional if that's not true to your, your business and brand. Um, that's what I would do. And you can also use like things like AIs to help you create um, well-written paragraphs. Canva Pro has one called Magic Write. If you want to Google that or YouTube it after this live, they can show you how to do that. But then you can go in and say, write me a professional sounding statement that explains that crocheted things are handmade and each one is going to be different and unique and they would never be the exact same thing twice because that's physically impossible. And then it will spit you out a, a response that you can copy and paste or tweak and then copy and paste into every single listing, every single one. Other things that you should have in every single listing is colors may change viewed to different screen settings. I do my best to Keep the colors as true to color as possible, but colors will vary based on different screen settings. Also, you can use sensory words in your listings and say, it is fire truck red. It is sky blue. Say it, compare the yarn color to something that most people in, in your in your ideal customer pool, like if you are in a different country and they don't have red fire trucks, maybe they have green fire trucks. That one's not going to make sense to them. In America, we have red fire trucks for the most point, for the most part. If someone said fire engine red, I would know exactly what type of red that they're talking about. So try to use sensory words that are very, very descriptive. Descriptive words is probably better um, to help explain the color so they know what they're getting. Um, you definitely want to be as crystal clear as possible in your listing description, not just your photos, in your description as well. And in your photos, make sure you're not using filters or um, weird like distorted sizes in like if you've made your own flat lay and you and you were like it's a digital flat lay and you're putting stuff in the, in the frame. If you have a product that's this small and you put an iPhone next to it and your iPhone is three times the size of an actual iPhone, that's going to be not clear to the size of the thing that they're getting. So and other ways that you can help avoid that besides putting the disclaimer in is being very clear in your listing photos and in your listing description what it is that they are getting so they know very clearly what they're going to get in the mail. And also if they if they come to you and say, I didn't know it was going to be yellow, I, I didn't know it was going to be um, bright yellow, I thought it was going to be pastel yellow, you can show them a screenshot in the listing where you said it is school bus truck, school bus yellow. You were like, I said it in the listing. I'm sorry you didn't see that. Um, it is school bus truck yellow. If you would like to send it back to me, I can give you a refund if that's something that you offer. Um, I hope that was helpful. Thank you, I know. Heather says, when you, when you are seeing it, videos are getting a loss, a lot less views. How do you get your views back up? Heather, I'm assuming you're talking about Instagram and you just don't worry about it. You do not worry about it. And I know that sounds impossible. You're like, Ashley, that's impossible. It's not you, most likely. If you have been doing similar stuff and all of a sudden your views just tank, it's probably because Instagram's doing some weird stuff. It happens. I mean, it's like this. Every other day is like this. Um, some of my reels were getting 5,000 views recently when two weeks before that they were getting 100,000 views. Okay. Very drastic all the time. It is never the same. It is never consistent at all. So it is not you. It is social media. Um, so don't stress about it. Just keep putting out content, keep serving your ideal customer well, and the people that need to see it will be the people that see it. Also, it doesn't matter how many views you get. You are a finished piece seller. If you put out a video and it gets three or a hundred views, but you sell two of your items, that's a victory, right? It doesn't matter how many views. If you get a hundred thousand views and you sell zero items, that's the opposite of what you want. That's not how you're not in business for likes on Instagram or views on reels. That's not what you're in business for. You're in business to sell your products. So keep that as your as your um, gauge to let you know if things are doing good or not. Don't worry about the views. Don't worry about the likes. You can even turn them off if you want to. You can keep them on for social proof or you can turn them off. Technically, um, people aren't going to know if they're doing well or not. So it's not going to hurt you, right? They're not going to say, oh, nobody's liking her or she's got no views on her thing. They're not going to know. 
So you can turn them off if you want to. It's it's truly not as important as we have been made to believe that it is. And I know that sounds crazy. And I know that you're like, Ashley, you just hit 90,000 followers on Instagram. Of course, you're going to say that. I promise it's not important. I had like 80 something thousand followers on Instagram, 13,000 something people on my email list, over 2000 people registered for my webinar. But you want to know how many people signed up for Crochet Boss Academy? Just under 200. 80,000 people on Instagram and just under 200 people signed up for Crochet Boss Academy. It's not, it's not about how many followers you have. It's about how well you serve your people so then they want to support your business when the time comes because you are serving them well. You have created a product that is going to help them raise their quality of life, make them happier, be convenient, whatever it is that you're doing. So it does not matter as much as we have been conditioned to think it matters. Um, so keep that in the back of your mind or the forefront when you're trying to um, pay attention. And it's good to pay attention. It's good to see what types of videos do good and which types of videos do not so good. But compare them in a way that's not when things start getting crazy. Like if you had a type of video and it did really, really good this time and you did it again and it did awful, that doesn't mean the video isn't good. It mean, It could mean that the algorithm is just being funky. Anytime Instagram is editing or adding something new or changing or tweaking, things hit the, the floor real fast. They, it, everything goes to crap real fast in a handbasket. So um, don't take it personally. Don't let it affect your business and keep serving your idle customer well and you will be fine. Thank you for your question. Courtney says, how do you nicely say no when people ask you to make something that's not part of the selection of snugglers you already make? So Courtney, if you don't want to make them, that is your right. If you do want to make them, if they are asking you for a snuggler and you sell snugglers and they're asking you for a specific animal that you don't offer currently and you could easily offer that animal, that might be the market telling you we, we also want this animal and you can add that to your shop. So be very smart and mindful. But if you sell snugglers and they're asking you to make a granny square blanket, you can say, I actually don't make granny square blankets. Here's my friend, um, Sarah. She makes them and sells them in her shops and they're beautiful. That's what I would suggest doing. Point them to somebody in the community that will serve them when you are not willing and or able to serve them. And that is your right. If you want to make snugglers, Make snugglers and make them well and serve people who want snugglers. You will be known for snugglers. That will be what your brand is built around. People will always come back to you anytime they need a new snuggler and they will always tell their friends where they got theirs and their friends will come to you. It's a very good thing to do to have just one type of product. It's a very good thing to do. It's very hard for most of us, but it's very, very good when you can make it, when you can manage it and send those customers to somebody else. I get messages daily. And I send people to my friends who sell those things, even if I don't sell them. And that's not bad business. That's very good business. You don't go to Apple and ask for carpet for your house. That would make no sense. And if Apple started selling carpet, their, their computer stuff would be less good and their carpet would be horrible because they do computer stuff. It would be horrible if they tried to do too many things. They would do nothing well. So send them to your friends that you know do really well in those things. Take a moment out of your time to go find someone. Post in a Facebook group like Ash and Tay and say, hey, I have a customer that wants a granny square blanket and I don't make those and I don't know anybody off the top of my head that does. But if you make one, post your Etsy listing here and I will send it to them for you. Go out of your way to do that because what you put in is what you're going to get out. And when you start doing generous things like that, more generous things are going to come back your way because that's just how it works. Um, so that is what I would do, Courtney. Thank you for your question. Oh, when it comes to how you nicely say no, you can use AI to create your professional sounding statement. Um, I am not a, I'm not a good writer. That is not my area of expertise. So you do not want my advice for how to like technically word it. But I would say um, if they sent you a picture, if they sent me a picture and they were like, hey, can you make this? I'm like, wow, that's so pretty. I love um I love how the petals pop out of that blanket. I actually don't make granny square blankets. I make baby snugglers that are comfort toys for children ages three and under. But my friend Samantha makes these. Here's a link to her Etsy shop. That's what I would do. I hope you find what you need. Have a great day. That's what I would do. Um, Lilla says, how do you get engagement on Instagram post? I'm in Crochet Boss Academy. Lilla, that's coming in module five, girlfriend. Hang tight. We're almost there. Vonda, how did it go with the Hobby Lobby polls? It went really well, Vonda. We had over 2,000 people 
um, submitting answers. And I'm, I was so happy to send it to Hobby Lobby because I was like, they're going to be blown away by this. And um, she was, she was very happy. I'm sure they're still coming through it. Sierra and I had to, so I was to send them screenshots of like the results so they could do it for their research and development. And the questions where you guys had to put it in the question box, we had to scroll for days. I mean, Sierra videos like screen recorded herself slowly scrolling and it was, I mean, it was probably a 10 to 20 minute video. I don't know for sure, but it was so big. And we had to upload it into Google Drive and then send it to Hobby Lobby that way because there were so many answers and responses for them to come through. So I think it was really good. And I think it will um, hopefully lead to some really good things inside of their yarn. Um, Umber, no, you should not. You should not just because you think that you should. You should do what makes sense for you and your business. If you want to be a pattern designer only, be a pattern designer only. Two ideal customers means two businesses, two Etsy shops, two Instagrams, two email lists. I don't recommend it for anybody to ever have two businesses. It is exhausting. I have one business, but I have a crafty concept and I have Crochet Boss Academy. They're both under a crafty concept, but doing them both is very hard. And I have two assistants and it's still very hard. I oftentimes feel like I am drowning still with my two assistants. So um, let that sink in, in your brain and know that if you are a solo entrepreneur, less is going to always be more. When you, when you can focus on a specific area, that area will be way better than if you're trying to pull yourself into multiple areas. It would be like Apple selling carpets. We would not go there for carpet or flooring for our home. And last one, Kim says, how do you add a call to action and post without seeming spammy? Again, Kim, I'm not really good with words. If you are inside of Crochet Boss Academy, this is going to be talked about in detail in module five, which is going to be dropping in just a couple days. So if you are inside of Crochet Boss Academy, hang tight for that. If you are not inside of Crochet Boss Academy, for one, you want to just give them one call to action. You don't want to give them 15 things to do. So ask them a question that is easily answerable. Don't just say, how are you today? Ask them something specific. So the answer shoots in their brain immediately and then their fingers just start typing it before they even like realize what's happening. It's just a subconscious thing. So make it one question. Don't ask them 15 things and make it very a very easy thing to answer, very quick thing to answer. Um, do you like red or blue? That's a very quick, easy thing for them to answer. People love to give their opinions. People love to give their advice. Um, what did you do when your baby was teething because mine is doing X, Y, and Z and I need help? They're going to love to help you with that. But you want it to be ideal customer specific and you want it to be business specific to your business. So if you do not sell baby things, posting a post about asking for advice for a teething baby is not helpful. You want to, unless you can word it in a way that is helpful. So for me, I'm a small business owner. My audience is small business owners. If I had a small baby at home, I could say, I need help. What is your advice on teething babies? Because I am struggling to run my business while my child is teething. I need help so I can run my business better. See how I did that? It's not just, I don't sell baby things, but I, I speak to small business owners and so I turned my need into something small business owners would be able to emotionally engage with. Um, so keep that in mind as well, Kim. All right, friends, that is our 30 minute window. Thank you so much for being here. Excellent, Kim. You're going to get lots of help inside of module five. So be excited for that, girls. It's going to be, you guys are going to love it. It's probably going to be your favorite module up until this point. Um, I will see you, you Crochet Boss Academy students tonight at six o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All of the other beautiful people hanging out with us today and those watching the replay, I see you hustling and working hard and trying to take in all this free knowledge as best as you can to start growing your businesses. You are doing a great job. That is why I put it out for you. I want you to have free knowledge and access to tips and tricks to help you grow your business. I will always be providing free content for you guys for the life of my business. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for asking questions. And thank you for engaging in the comments. Without you, it would just be me talking to my yarn wall or Sierra, and it would be very boring. So thank you. Thank you for being here. I will see you guys next Thursday, 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Lord's willing. And it will be all for the month of April. We're still going to be at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that was the Ask Ashley's for March, and it will be again in April. And then we might switch it up come May. 
Um, but that is the current schedule. So I will see you guys next week, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a great weekend. And I will catch you later.